streets, chalk with your host Reggie B. Come on, let's all join in. Free your voice, it's your choice, all right here. Oh, simply stray, simply stray, talk. What you doing? Nothing, just relaxing. What's going on with you? Just looking at this meme you put on Facebook. I thought you were trying to get with Felicia. I am. Why? Because I'm trying to figure out why you post a meme about women only wanting money with a picture of Lucius Lyons holding a gun. Is this supposed to get her attention? You know she sees your post on Facebook. Let me school you on my super approach to women. <sighs> she going to see the post, make a comment, and before you know it, we'll be talking on Messenger. Then we'll be talking on the phone. And the next thing you know, Jesus, we having dinner. Boy, I should slap the taste out of your mouth and your daddy mouth. If that ain't the dumbest thing I ever heard. Do you believe half the stuff you say or even think? You know what? Put the phone close to your ear. I want you to hear what a real woman thinks. Are you listening? We have a great show for you today. So let's get the show started with your host, Reggie Maddox. Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of the Simply Straight Talk Show. This is your host Reggie Maddox and today we got a show for you. And I'm really hoping that this topic will really help a lot of people. But as always... Thank you for joining us, whether you're on the morning ride, the evening ride, the afternoon ride, or you just chilling, saying, man, I want a good conversation. Well, you in the right place, right here on the Simply Straight Talk Show. Today, we're going to be talking about what's keeping you single. What is it that's keeping you single? Now, one of the things I hear people say, or I hear people say to other people are, is, you know, well, you're single because you were meant to be single. Everybody's not meant to be with somebody. And you know what? I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Because I don't believe that every person or you well, I, mean, I don't believe that anybody is meant to be alone in life. I simply don't believe that. I believe that we go through life and we may date, we may get married, we meet people we have breakups. Uh, we get into the situation of going through a divorce. And I think that people just end up with the wrong person. And because of that, we're going into being single. Then you get a person who gets the attitude of, well, I'm just not meant to find anybody. No, you are meant to be with somebody. You are meant to be in a successful, happy relationship. So I want you to get that out of your head right now. Don't let anybody tell you. And please, you don't talk yourself into believing that you were meant to be alone. I don't believe that. I don't want you to believe that because that is not true. You were meant to live a happy and fruitful life. You was meant to have somebody in your life who's going to be a blessing to you, who's going to be encouragement to you, who's going to be a motivation for you. They're going to be a help me. They're going to be a partner with you. That's what you're meant to have. But today we want to talk about what is it that's keeping you single? Why is it that you may be alone right now? Like I said, right now, not forever, right now. Because sometimes there are things about ourselves that we need to work on. Sometimes there's things that we just don't see. And you could be a good person. And it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It don't mean you got a bad attitude, although that does play a part into it. But sometimes there's other things about you that may be keeping you single, that you're doing. And that's some of the things we want to talk about today. Because I want people to understand that there is a difference between being alone and lonely, being single by choice and single because of maybe some type of personal or some type of issue within yourself. And that's some of the things we want to talk about today. Because I really do believe that you can be happy. You deserve to be happy. And that's just what we need to understand. So let's clear that whole mindset. Let's throw away that whole philosophy, that whole myth about you were meant to be alone. Some people are not meant to ever find anybody. That's a bunch of hogwash and it's not true. You deserve 
happiness. You deserve love. And part of that is starting by getting to know you, understanding who you are as a person, being able to self-reflect about yourself, look at yourself and say, what is it about me that I need to change? And sometimes people feel like if I change this about me, it's going to make me a weak person. It's going to make me a simp or it's going to make me, you know, this type of worthless person. No, the changes I'm talking about are going to make you a better. I'm not talking about you. Oh, I have to give out way more money. No, that's not what I'm talking about as far as you getting to meet somebody. I'm talking about you changing the person, some of the things about you that may affect the perception, may be something you're displaying in your behavior, your attitude, your communication. But those are the things that we want to talk about today. So let's get started. Now, if you're single and you've been single for a while, you know, there are things that you're going to have to take a look at. There are things that we're going to have to address. And first, I want to start off with this. One of the main reasons that I tell you, like, I know for me, you know, because I joke around about me being single all the time. And I've been single for what, like four or five years now. And well, probably longer than that. But <laughs> one of the things that I know about me and the reason why I'm single and I'm guilty of this is the fact that uh, when you're too isolated and, and that's me and I'm being honest with you, I'm too isolated, you know, and a person that's too isolated is someone who's not really exposing themselves as far as going to places where you can socially interact. And some people are automatically thinking, well, I don't like going to the clubs. I don't like going to bars. Well, guess what? I'm right there with you. I am not a club person. I am not a bar person at all. But here are the th- there, there are things you can do that you can enjoy where you can be more social. You know what I mean? Like if you I love the theater. So if you like going to plays, go to plays. Even if you go by yourself, you're going to find that you're going to probably meet or talk to somebody. But here's the thing. Don't say if I go to one event, I'm going to meet somebody. You're going to have to start getting out there and doing the things that you enjoy. If you like going to sporting events, go to sporting events. If you like going to art shows, go to art shows. If you like going to jazz concerts, go to jazz concerts. Do the things you love. It doesn't have to be nightclub life type stuff. Do the things you like. Even if it's cultural things, do those things. Because the more you do different things in different places, the more you're going to be exposing yourself to other people. And then you might, in fact, come in contact with somebody who you find out enjoys the same thing that you do. That's how you get more socially active. And that's what you have to do. You can't be isolated. Because for me, I travel, I work, you know, when I'm in my spot, I'm in my spot, I'm working, working. And that's pretty much what I do. Homework, homework. And I know for a fact, I don't get out as much as I should. So that's why I do love when I do the music reviews, because now I'm going to the shows, I'm meeting people. So that's my kind of my way of getting out to meet people, which I'm trying to work on more is getting out to meet people. But you really have to do that. You got to get out of that isolation mode. Because if you're sitting at home, the world is not going to bring everything to you. Okay, you got to get out there. And it doesn't mean that you're out there wearing the skimpiest outfit or wearing tank top shirts trying to show off your muscles. You're just going out there relaxed. You don't go out with the intent that you're trying to find somebody. You're going out with the intent that I just want to enjoy the moment and let whatever happens, happens. And then you'll notice you start to engage. So don't go out with the expectation of I'm going to meet my husband. I'm going to meet my wife. I'm going to meet a girlfriend. I'm going to meet a boyfriend. Go out with the expectation of, you know what? I'm taking myself out because I want to enjoy the day. I want to enjoy the theater. I want to enjoy the basketball game. I want to enjoy the football game. Take yourself out. Treat yourself. Don't feel like you got to stay isolated. Next, routine lifestyle. And I think this is something that a lot of people is guilty of as well. People will have a routine lifestyle. They eat at the same places. They drive the same way to work, the same way home. They go to the same store at the same time. They do laundry on the same day. You know, it is a clear routine with their life. Now, although they may be going out and going to places, the problem is 
they're not expanding their world. They're keeping their world in this short little bubble. So it's another version of isolation. But the only thing is everything is so routine. It's like somebody who goes to, uh, let's say, somebody who goes to a restaurant. Okay, they go to a restaurant. Let's say somebody who goes to a sandwich shop. But then they're saying, man, I would really love some steak. I would really love some potatoes. I really love some fried fish. Well, if you're going to a sandwich shop and all they make is sandwiches, you're not going to be able to get Mexican food, Caribbean food, African food. So you're limiting yourself. You're holding yourself back. So you got to break your routine sometimes. So if you're that type of person that's in a routine where you travel the same way, you do the exact same thing every day of the week, then you got to break that routine because your routine may keeping you from meeting that special person or meeting or possibly going on some great dates with somebody. So the simple fact of you got to get out of that routine. A routine life is so predictable that it's predictable that you're not going to meet anybody. So you got to kind of open your mind to other places to eat, other places to go, taking different routes home, doing something different, changing the days that you do things to give yourself more exposure. The next thing is fear of relationships. And some people have that, whether it comes from just a fear from past experiences or maybe they develop a fear because they've been influenced by other people or what they've seen other people go through in relationships. So when they do go on a date, you know what I'm saying? It's just they're so scared of someone getting close to them. So they have this mental fear in their mind of like, wow, you know, if I get into this relationship, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. So you got to be careful about developing fears based on your past experiences, because you got to remember the new person you meet is not the same as the person you dated before. Now, you're always going to see like anybody you date. You can always say, you know what? He likes to play video games. My ex like to play video games. And if he's doing the same thing, I'm going to be into the same pattern of a guy that likes to play video games all day long and not spend time with me. And men can be the same way. You know, oh, this girl, you know, she seems to be really into her friends and her friends really. My ex friends were really sort of like my ex girlfriend All her friends were really into her business. And she was telling everything and that caused problems with us. And I see that she's really sort of got a relationship like that with her friends. Now you're putting these people in the same boat as the people you were with. You're bringing something to the relationship that's not there. So what you have to do is understand this. You got to actually let a situation play out, not to the point to where you're getting hurt, but just kind of observe. Don't base something off of a past experience, because sometimes it's real easy to remember something that somebody did to you. And you just kind of pick one moment and attach it to somebody new. And that person, yes, they may like to play video games, but they may play one game for an hour and say, "Okay, I'm done. What's up, baby? What you want to do? And it's the same thing with a woman. Yes, she may have some good friends. They may talk and hang out and laugh. But you know what? She may be the type to say, listen, I don't don't bring my I don't talk about my, my man. I don't talk about my man's life. I don't share our business because our home is our home. So you have to be open to allowing to actually just observing a situation and putting those fears aside. Just pray to God, remove those fears, because if you keep those fears in your life about relationships, you're not going to meet anybody because you're going to keep bringing that into every relationship and it's just going to cause more problems. The next thing is when people do meet somebody and they go on a date. One of the things they do is not enjoy the moment because they're so busy sitting there thinking about everything they can say that might go wrong or they're looking for something for this person to say that's going to make them not want to go out with them or end the date because they're so worried about their past again. You know what I'm saying? So they're sitting there like so busy trying to analyze everything the other person is saying, trying to look for flaws and red flags that they're not even enjoying the date. They can't enjoy the date. They're not even enjoying the moment. 
You got a nice meal in front of you. You got somebody who's trying to laugh and talk to you and get to know you. But you can't really get into what's going on because you're already your mind is 100 miles ahead of them already trying to find red flags. You're looking for something. You're even plotting what question to ask based on what they said five minutes ago to see if you get the same answer again. So you're already putting this person at a disadvantage because you're already missing out on what could be something good because you can't enjoy the moment. Because you're using this time, which is supposed to be a nice, relaxing first date just to get to know each other, just to kind of introduce yourselves. You're overthinking the whole situation. You're already trying to pull a bullet in the relationship. You're trying to blow it up and it's not necessary. Relax. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the moment. Hey, guys, look, we're going to come back and we're going to finish up this discussion because we got a lot more to talk about. So you stay tuned right here on the Simply Straight Talk show. And today we're talking about what key, what is keeping you single. So it's important for you guys to really stay tuned and listen in because there are a lot of us right now that are single. that are still trying to figure out what's going on. We don't want to be alone, but we don't want to get hurt. We don't we want to open up, but we don't want to expose ourselves and have it thrown back in our face. So that's the purpose of this. That's what we're talking about today. And I'm pretty sure this can help somebody and I'm hoping it can help you. So stay tuned on the Simply Straight Talk Show. We'll be right back. This is your host, Reggie. Free your mind, free your voice right here on Simply Straight Talk. Hello, Simply Straight Talk family. If you are enjoying this episode, at the end of the show, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. And why not share this with a friend? Also, visit our blog at newlifenewmind.com, where you can find additional articles on more great topics. Stay tuned. The show will continue right after this message. We're back with the conversation starter and the voice that works harder. Your host, Reggie. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the second part of the Simply Straight Talk show. And today we are talking about what is keeping you single? What's the reason that you are sitting at home alone on a, alone on a Friday night, Saturday night? As a matter of fact, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Why are you sitting at home alone? We're going to talk about that. Now, I want to repeat something that I said in the first part of the show. Get rid of the whole mindset that you were meant to be alone, that some people are meant to be alone. They're meant to be by themselves. They're not meant to be married. They're not meant to be in a relationship. No, that's just something people tell people because they don't know what they're talking about. That is absolutely not true. Do not Put yourself in that position and speak that into existence in your life. You were not meant to be alone. You were not meant not to be, not to feel love. You were meant to be loved. You were meant to be cherished. You were meant to be respected. You were meant to be honored. You are meant to be treated the way a man or woman should be treated in a relationship. With that being said, now, we talked about in the first part of the show, we talked about people that are isolated themselves. That's why they are, you know, that's why they may be still be single. People who have a routine lifestyle repeating the same thing. People who have a fear relationships. And people, we talk about people going on dates who don't enjoy the moment because they're to, so busy trying to think about stuff that hasn't even happened. But next, we want to talk about people who feel like their looks or their money or their status is enough to warrant you to be with them. Because there are some people that are really like that. Now, because I honestly, now, I dated a girl who, this was years, oh my God, this was like, what, maybe 15 years ago? No, maybe less than that, 12 years ago. This girl actually said, because I want to ask her, like, you know, what is it as a woman do you feel like you're bringing? Because who's having that type of conversation? Like, she told me as far as a man, you know, you know, you need to pay the bills. You need to be respectful. You need to be able to be a part of my child's life, understand what we're going through. And I got all that. I get all that. I agree. But I asked her, I said, OK, so as a woman, what do you feel you're bringing for me? She's like, well, I look good. 
and I'll give you some. And I'm like, wait, wait, what? Wait a minute. So as a man, I have all these extra stipulations. But as a woman, you're telling me that your looks and your body is enough to sustain the relationship at base, basically based on what you feel I need. See, that's the point. You can never assume that you look so good or you got so much money or you just got such a high status that that's enough to fulfill a relationship. Now, you may have people who date you because you look good. You know, there's some guys out there that women call the pretty boys. They just flock to these guys. There are women out there that men just flock to. And but the thing about it is, if there's nothing internally about you, that's beautiful or that's contributing something to that person mentally, emotionally, spiritually, then they're not going to stay with you. If they do, it's going to be because, well, you know what? I'll stay with them because at least I'm getting a free ride in this area or this aspect, or basically you're just a convenience because as a woman, you can easily be a, a man's eye candy out in public where it's like, oh man, yeah, you got a nice one. But in behind closed doors, I can't stand her. And the same thing with a woman. You can have a dude that you feel like that's your eye candy to the other women. And behind closed doors, it's like, I can't even stand when he touches me. But other women are looking at him talking about how good he looks. Looks, money, and status do not make a relationship. So if you got looks, if you got money, and you got status, or if you have all three, do not think that that is enough to suffice a relationship. Okay? Because it's not. Next we want to talk about emotional baggage. Now, this is one of the biggest things that people bring into a relationship, and we kind of touched on it. A lot of people will bring in things from their past and dump it all on their next person that comes into their life. So that next person, you know, is kind of getting sideswiped by all this stuff that this person is bringing in. You know, she was hurt by this guy before. This woman, you know, he broke up with this woman and it put him in debt. So it's just the fact of you know, like everything that you picked up from the last one. You know, this person cheated on me. This person, you know, manipulated me. This person cost me my friends. This person cost me my family. So now you're coming into a relationship with them and they're bringing all that to the table. And you didn't even know the person. You wasn't even dating the person. But all of a sudden, you now had to carry the weight and some of the blame for what somebody else did to them years ago. You got to let that emotional baggage go. You have got to find a way to heal. If you do not heal, you will continually to be single because many people have their they, many people are not just not going to carry that weight from somebody where you're still harboring emotions for somebody that's already moved on, married, met somebody else and living their life. You single sitting here worried, thinking and mad at them. They got another woman. They got another dude and they live in their life. They happy not giving you a thought or losing an ounce of sleep over you. Next, mentally unable to transition from a single life mindset. This is something I have seen in a lot of people. I've seen a lot of people who will meet somebody nice. They got a good person, you know, because I've seen this in women and men. Where they will meet somebody, it's a nice person, is what they wanted, but because they've been single so long, they're unable to transition their mind from like, okay, you know, I'm going out, you know, he wants to pay for the dinner, and all of a sudden she wants to debate it. I can pay for my own dinner. I don't need you to pay for my, I got money too. And that's not what it's about. And it's the same thing with men. You know, you got some men who get into a relationship, but they forget, like, okay. You wanted to be with her, but yet you want to spend time with the boys. You'd go to a new city to and you take her with you on a trip, but you want to leave her at the hotel or leave her with your family while you go run out and hang out with the guys. That's not how it works. Come on, people. You got to make that mental transition that when you're going from a single life to a life with somebody else. You're going to have to make some sacrifices. You got to make that adjustment because you cannot act. Like you were single. You can't be flirting with people. You can't you can't be like, well, listen, just call me on Tuesday because I'm used to my down, my downtime, my quiet time. I don't want to be bothered with nobody except for Tuesday or Friday night. Make an appointment. You can't do that. You got to make that transition that the fact that a relationship means this is somebody that you want to spend time with. You want to build something with. So you got to make that transition. 
in your mind of going from single, doing what I want to do, when I want to do, um, you know, I give you time when I want to give you time. You got to make that transition. If you don't transition from a single minded person to a committed relationship type person, you're going to stay single. People can feed that. They, they can feel off that. Next, judgmental on the surface level about a way a person's looks or a status. This is a reason I think a lot of people are single. Many people are unwilling to see a person, even though they see like, oh, this is a good person. He's a good husband, but you know what? He's got a belly. I don't think I can date a man with a belly. I don't think I can date a man that's under 5'11", or I don't think I can date a woman who has a kid. I can't date a woman who has a belly. I can't date a woman with short hair. Oh, she doesn't look that great to me because I don't like her makeup. I don't like her eyes. Oh, she don't dress sexy enough. Oh, he got he dressed like an old man. You know, there, there are reasons that people actually don't date a good person that to me is the stupidest thing I ever seen. And I'm going to say this right now, but I'm going to try to keep it blank because I don't want to get too deep into it. I see people get mad at somebody because they didn't want to date them because of their weight, because of their height, their eye color, or whatever the stupid reason was. They were so judgmental. You know, that person only makes 40000 a year. I need a man that makes eighty or 90000 a year. Or that woman, you know, she works as a bank teller. I can't date nobody like that, man. I need somebody that's, got, that's at my level. You know what I'm saying? You're missing out on a good woman. And I think that's the issue that I'm seeing with a lot of people, man. And it's really disturbing the fact that you're going to pass up on somebody that, that's going to be really good for you. That's going to be that really good, better half for you. And you're passing that up for somebody who don't really give a crap about you. That's only putting on a show. So you have to be careful. And one thing I want to tell people don't get mad at somebody because you looked at them and said, oh, she, she's she got a little bit of a belly. Oh, she a size 12. I don't date 12s, man. I only date 8s and below. Don't get mad if that person chooses somebody of another race or somebody else approaches them and say, you know what? He has a little bit of a belly, but I see he likes to work. They actually talk to the person like, oh, yeah, but I'm trying to work out. I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to eat right. A good woman who sees the potential of this man would be like, listen, I don't mind walking with you. I don't mind working out. I work out, too. We don't have to do the same thing, but I go to the gym. You know, I like eating healthy so we can do it together. It'd be like, you know, me, you know, you got somebody who's on the ride with you. This is somebody who sees the potential. And then when that person makes it and comes up and he's so appreciative or she's so appreciative of the person that stood by her during the time that they was working on themselves, everybody wants to get mad and say, oh, you chose that? Why? You chose that person? Why? Oh, why are you with that person? Why? Because they saw the best of me on the inside. You judged me from the outside. So that's why me and this person are happy living our life and you single over here hating. All right? Deuces. But anyway, yeah, there's a little personal stuff in that one now. But hey, look, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to be right back, man. Y'all listening to the Simply Straight Talk Show. Y'all keep it right here, baby. Keep it locked down. We're going to come back with the final word of the day. We'll be back with your host, Reggie, on Simply Straight Talk. Hey, are you looking for some great music, upbeat, and with a positive voice? Well, the song, I Stand With You, is exactly what you need. This timeless song has a pop version sung by Audrey Carmel. And a reggae version sung by General Steele, now known as Revelation. Now I know some days you may feel blue, Lord. Trust in your greatness to see you through. These songs are now available on iTunes and other digital platforms for download. Don't miss out. Get your copy today. Are you ready for the straight truth? Reggie, what's the final word for today? Hey, everybody. This is the Simply Straight Talk Show, and we are now on the final word for today's show. Listen, guys. 
I know a lot of you out there are single. A lot of you out there are looking for that right person. You're waiting on that right person. You are praying that God will send you that right person. The one thing I want to say to you is this. Don't rush it. Take your time and be willing to self-reflect. That's so important because oftentimes we fail to recognize the flaws within ourselves. And I don't say that these flaws are intentional. It's just natural. It's human nature that life itself is going to teach you certain things. You just got to learn how to implement those things into your life. Because even though you feel like you may not be acting a certain way, your body language, your behavior, your facial expressions, mentally, what you think is going to be reflected in some fashion, whether it's tapping on the table, tapping your feet, crossing your legs, folding your arms, rolling your eyes to the right, rolling your eyes to the left, a breath in, breath out. But the important thing is make sure that if you do want to meet somebody, be willing to go out. And like I said, it doesn't have to be going out to the nightclubs and the bars and all that type stuff. Just put yourself in the position of doing things that you enjoy. Like I said, if you enjoy the arts, if you enjoy shows, movies, pictures, sporting events, you know, if you enjoy hiking, camping, do things like that. There are groups you can join to where you can make yourself more socially available because really that's what dating is about. You know, it's about being social, but you're just trying to find that one person in life that you can share all of your social experiences with, that you can share your life with and build that foundation. It doesn't mean you're losing who you are. It doesn't mean you're trading in your independence. It just means that you're finding somebody that's going to accept you for you and you accept them for who they are. That's what it's all about. And like I said, I've said it in both parts of the show, lose that whole mindset that there's nobody for you or you are, you are meant to be alone. That is such bull crap. And it's so untrue. Everybody is meant to be loved and feel loved and be appreciated. And you can do that. You have the opportunity, but it's up to you. It's up to you to make sure that you are mentally ready for a relationship and that you are open to what's good, not on the outside, not just what's presented, but to the person as far as how they're going to treat you, what they're going to give to you. But it really starts with you because what you put off is what you're going to get back. And one thing else, be careful about what you post on social media, because if you're posting all these memes about how men are jerks, men are this, men are that, women are this, women are that, automatically, It's going to look like you got some emotional baggage or you're just angry and just full of hatred, you know, and I see so many people do that on social media. And I just look at it like, wow, you know, it's not even done for a joke when you post those things every single day. You know, it's the fact of that's who you are. So let's just be realistic about that. And let's just really think about what we're doing and go out there and find somebody that's going to be good for you. But don't rush it. Don't go out everywhere you go with the intent of, I'm going out today. I'm going to meet my husband. I'm going to meet my wife. I'm going to meet my girlfriend. I'm going to meet my boyfriend. No. Go out with the intent that you're just going to enjoy the moment. You're going to enjoy the day. If you're going out for lunch, just go and enjoy your lunch. Think about the food, what you're eating, how much you like it, how blessed you are. And the same thing, if you're going to a football game, a basketball game, if you're going to see a theater, I went to see the Shin Young show. I went by myself. I enjoyed the show. I was not thinking or looking for anybody. And normally that's when it happens, because the more you engage in these activities, the more you come to see people around and somebody's going to take notice you notice of you. Nobody's going to notice you sitting on your living room couch unless you got men or women patrolling through your house or something like that. But come on, nobody's doing that. Nobody's going to notice you on your couch. Nobody's going to notice you in your car driving the same route every day, trying to avoid people. So make sure, man, do it. Be safe. Be good. Thank you, guys. I love you. Keep watching the show. I really appreciate everything that you're doing. Hey, so I will see you guys in...
next Friday. So don't forget to join us. And as always, I love you. Thank you for the support. Reg, Reggie Matters right here on the Simply Straight Talk Show. It's the end of the show, man. I can't talk. Hey, miss you guys. Hey, peace out. You've reached the end of another episode of the Simply Straight Talk Show. Connect with us at Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Don't forget to sign up to our newsletter and check out the New Life, New Mind blog at newlifenewmind.com. See you at the next episode.